Welcome to AP European History with Dr. Bravkin and AP Russian History Playlist Russia under the Communist Regime. Today I'd like to talk about uh, one of the most interesting topics having to do with Soviet history in general and that is the topic of Red Terror. What exactly is Red Terror? When did it start? What were the causes? Who were the initiators, who were the killers, who were the victims, all these issues are important enough to uh, try to explain them in a, in a concise way. First of all, when did it actually start? What is Red Terror? In my previous videos, I discussed the situation in 1918, the rebellion of the Committee of the Constituent Assembly government, the Czechoslovak Legion, uh, the Whites, the murder of the Tsar, all these very dynamic uh, and dramatic events. And so now we come to September 1918, and that is the date when officially the policy of Red Terror began. So it was a policy. It was a policy conducted by Lenin's government to smash the enemies of Soviet power. This is the official definition. Or to uh, liquidate or eliminate the enemies of the regime. Now, how did it start? What exactly triggered it? One could also say that there was the kind of a arbitrary killings of the opponents of the regime throughout 1918. But uh, this was not yet an official policy. One could even argue that the policy of Red Terror, in other words, uh, liquidation of the potential enemies of the regime, started in July 1918 with the murder of the Tsar. But it was still a kind of a behind-the-scenes murder that they didn't particularly want to uh, announce and were afraid to uh, make public. Uh, but here we have in the September 1918 official proclamation the policy of Red Terror. What triggered it actually was the uh, attempted assassination of Lenin. Uh, which happened in the first days of September, and uh, an SR, Socialist Revolutionary uh, member of the party, Fania Kaplan, almost blind, uh, you know, came to uh, a factory where Lenin was giving a spe speech and she shot at them at him. Uh, there were several important studies made and, and there was, you know, intriguing investigations that some historians argue that she couldn't have done it, it was somebody else because she was almost blind. Uh, she did hit Lenin, he was wounded, but he uh, was not killed. Uh, important thing is to remember, Fania Kaplan was a member of the Socialist Revolutionary Party and she was Jewish by nationality. Uh, another uh, victim of what was called at that time white terror, even though these people had nothing to do with the whites, uh, whites being white officers, they were as socialist revolutionaries, the party that won the elections of the, the Constituent Assembly and that the Bolsheviks um, essentially prevented from uh, taking power by their uh, usurpation of power after the Constituent Assembly. So there was another uh, Bolshevik victim of the SR, Socialist Revolution Terror, and that's the head of the Cheka, which is the Extraordinary Commission, uh, which is a secret police or Lenin's private political police who would actually run the Red Terror. Uh, Mr. Uritsky, he was killed also by a socialist revolutionary uh, in St. Petersburg, uh, at that time called Lenin, uh, St. Petersburg, uh, Petrograd. And so that too was one of the triggers of the policy of Red Terror. So, uh, that's how it started. What it actually was in the beginning was essentially a process of elimination of political enemies of the Bolshevik regime. Let's make it very clear. It was not a system of justice. It was not a system of enforcing the law. It was not anything that had anything to do with policing in sense of a governmental function. No. It was very close to being the opposite of what the uh, socialist revolutionaries did. They hit us, we're going to hit them. And by them, it meant the enemies of the Bolshevik party. Since the Bolshevik party was in power, the Communist Party, uh, it was a way to essentially liquidate or terrorize or kill or remove anybody who is potentially the enemy of the regime. The word potentially is criti critical because usually we associate even the most draconian measures as being for something that people have done. Now you do this, 
we kill you. Now, in this case, it had nothing to do with what you have actually done. The first 15,000 victims of the Red Terror were aristocracy, uh, were people who were associated with the old regime, with the policemen, the entrepreneurs, the, uh, the aristocratic uh, sort of elite of St. Petersburg who were in power just uh, a year previously. So they were kind of summarily round up and killed, shot in the uh, cellars of the Cheka uh, in the fall of 1918. They had no fault at all. They were not guilty of anything just because they were potentially suspect uh, and they were called socially alien elements or suspicious uh, elements or the class uh, enemy of the new regime. Uh, now, most of these people have been, had, were actually very apolitical and were essentially not involved in anything, uh, but they were, they were af the, the Bolsheviks were afraid. Now, we should also say that in the fall of 1918, the, the Bolsheviks were truly scared. Uh, they're like a scared dog that is just you know, barking and biting because uh, his last days may be coming. As I mentioned in the previous video, uh, the Germans were... Uh, still thought to be winning the war uh, and uh, nobody knew that in November there would be the armistice and the war would be over. Uh, they, they, they were very powerful and uh, uh, the expectation was even in London that the war would continue uh, well into 1919 and 1920. Uh, nobody knew uh, that it was just about to end, and therefore the, the, the Bolsheviks are very afraid that the Germans were going to occupy St. Petersburg, Petrograd, and Moscow, and install a puppet government as they did in Ukraine. So uh, their, they, the economy was collapsing, there was a, a rising movement against them uh, of the socialist revolutionaries, and uh, later on uh, the white officers movement that replaced them. So, as I mentioned in the previous video, they prepared for themselves passport to run away to Europe and hide just in case their regime would fall. So, it is in that atmosphere of, of the most uh, acute crisis that the regime to be, began to, you know, uh, bark back and hit back really hard at the potential enemies. Now, uh, uh, about the social composition uh, of the Cheka, uh, a lot of them were Latvians uh, who, who were originated in the Latvian riflemen, they were called. They were originally for the Bolsheviks because the Bolsheviks recognized independence of Latvia. There were also a lot of Jews uh, and also Chinese. This is also very important, the almost forgotten fact. A whole lot of people uh, were Chinese, but they were usually the executioner types. They were not very sophisticated, and many of them didn't speak any Russian. They were recruited from the poorest of the poor laborers uh, who were Chinese. Now, it is important to say a few words about uh, the Jews, because in, in a lot of Western literature, uh, you know, it's almost equated the the murderers and killers of the Cheka are the Jews, uh, and therefore they kind of make a link to the Jewish people. Now, uh, I, I should like to explain the, 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 the reasoning behind this. They basically argue like this. Since there were so many Jews in the Cheka, therefore it is a Jewish-Bolshevik uh, sort of conspiracy against the Russian people. Now, that, that is exactly not exactly so. Let me explain why. First of all, it's important to understand what do we mean, or anybody means, when they say Jew. Uh, what these people mean is that these are Jews by nationality, that by their ethnic origin. They were certainly, certainly not Jews in terms of their religion. Uh, no way. I mean, there was not a single religious person in the entire Bolshevik party, and let alone in the uh, Central Committee or the Cheka. So they were Jews only in a sense that they were ethnically Jews. They came from the Jewish neighborhood. Uh, as ethnicity, and in that sense, their their anger at the uh, czarist regime had to do not with their religion, but with their actually alienation from any religion, because they left their communities and they joined the revolutionary atheist party. The reason they did that is because they were very upset uh, and very vengeful against the czarist regime. 
Why is that? Well, let's put it like this. Because the Jews as a nationality and as a religious group could not own land. They were not allowed to live outside the pale area, the geographical area where they were supposed to live. They were not allowed to own property, to own land. And there was a strict quota on their education. And most of them went to have their education abroad. So in that sense, it was okay, the Jews were attracted to revolutionary parties who were against the Tsar and Tsar's regime because they were oppressed. Now, similarly, one could say that the blacks in America were attracted to civil rights movement not because of their religion, but because they were oppressed, because they felt that they, as, as a minority, as a national group, they could not do this, couldn't do that, couldn't sit in buses, couldn't sit in same trains. They were discriminated against, and therefore, they joined the civil rights movement. And some of them joined the revolutionary movement, such as Black Power, Malcolm X, etc. So by the same token, Jews were attracted to revolutionary parties, but both socialist revolutionaries and Mensheviks and SRs and the Bolshevik, all of them had a, a lot of Jews in them because these were the parties who fought against the Tsarist regime. Now, once the revolution happened and it was just the Bolshevik who seized power, many of them continued to be in that party and they, uh, you know, executed uh, the orders of the leadership uh, that was Lenin and Trotsky. And, of course, that is why there were a lot of them in all institutions of Bolshevik power, because that power was you know, uh, inheritor of the regime uh, that they had overthrown. From that point of view, uh, they were Jews, but only in the sense of being ethnically a deprived minority, but their uh, service in the Cheka was not the reflection of their Jewishness, but the reflection of their communist uh, meaning, uh, uh, meaning by communist ideas, not that they wanted to build communism a bright future. No, they were vengeful against the Tsarist regime, and that is why. Now, uh, a few words more about the stages of the Red Terror, at least in the part uh, that we're dealing now. Uh, we will deal much later with Stalinist terror in the 1920s and 30s. But in this period of the revolution and the civil war that followed, uh, as I said, the first victims were the... Uh, Tsarist regime aristocracy. Uh, then in 1919, uh, there were more and more people affected, specifically uh, the officers, because this was the height of the white uh, officers movement uh, against the Bolsheviks, so the so-called white Russian movement, uh, the whites, so any officers potentially uh, enemy and could be shot or arrested or harassed. Then the new came, uh, this was the members of the political parties that were now totally outlawed, such as the cadet party, constitutional democrats, and the socialist revolutionaries, and the Mensheviks, and then there were increasingly the priests. There was a pretty large a uh, number of priests who were executed, exiled, and uh, dispossessed by the Bolsheviks, especially in 1919, 20, 21, and 22. So the priests were a big one. Uh, and then, increasingly, 1919, the uh, uh, Cossacks and peasants. Cossacks is a very, very interesting and long page that I can only mention here. Maybe I'll come back to it. And that is the process of uh, decozakization, uh, which is a mass slaughter of the Cossacks in the uh, Don area, today's Donbass, uh, an area disputed between Russia and Ukraine. So these are the Cossacks, the Don Cossacks, who rose against the Bolsheviks uh, in, a, in an uprising, and there was a vengeful massacres of the Cossacks by the Bolsheviks, uh, specifically on Trotsky's orders, in the spring and summer 1919, and then after the defeat of the Whites, even more so in 1920-21. And finally, perhaps the largest number, and I'll come back to it definitely in the future videos, were the so-called Greens, uh, which were the peasants, peasant rebels against the communist regime, who were uh, just beginning their movement in 1918 and who reached crescendo in 1919, 1920, 21. Now, these people could be counted in uh, tens of thousands and then hundreds of thousands. Uh, as I shall show in the coming video. So this was 
huge numbers of Russians uh, who were uh, arrested and uh, harassed and shot and then put in concentration camps uh, by the this notorious organization called the Cheka. So this is briefly about the Red Terror as an official policy of the Bolshevik regime. Thank you and please uh, subscribe and tell your friends. We'll have many more uh, videos coming up on the Russian history and European history with Dr. Brovkin. Thank you.